Welcome to the world premiere of the music video Different Than Before by Amanda Sum, directed by Mayumi Yoshida, presented by Vancouver Asian Heritage Month Society at the Exploration Festival in celebration of Asian Heritage Month. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. We are very excited to share with you this music video that was created in response to continuous anti-Asian racism. And we are very pleased to have our key creators and stars here with us today in a panel to discuss the making of this video and the importance of standing up to anti-Asian hate. I'm your host and moderator for this conversation. My name is Sabrina Ronnie Ferminger. I'm a film and television industry journalist, host of the Wavier Screen Scene podcast, writer for Monte Cristo magazine, and creator and host of the web series Real Talk About Race in BC Film, which is about the efforts to dismantle white supremacy in our local film and television industry. I am so honored to lead this conversation today. I would now like to invite the Executive Director of Vancouver Asian Heritage Month Society, Jasper Sloan Yip, to say a few words. Hey, this is Jasper from Exploration Festival. Uh, sorry I couldn't be there with you today to be part of the conversation. I just wanted to film a quick message to say hello and congratulations to you, Amanda, and to your team. Uh, different than before is such a beautiful song and I'm sure the video from what I've seen it looks so so impressive so I'm really excited for the world premiere today and uh, thank you for including Exploration Festival as part of your big premiere we're really proud to be one of the presenters so uh, I'll leave it at that have a great conversation and uh, congratulations again I'd like to now introduce our guests first up is Amanda Sum the songwriter, singer, and the actor who plays the character of Amanda in the Different Than Before video. Amanda is a music and theater performer and creator. Uh, her music style is described as indie pop with a jazz influence, and she has played at the TD Vancouver International Jazz Festival with her Asian girl band. Amanda holds a BFA from FFU, SFU, that's a lot of initials, okay, Amanda, and is Theatre <laughs> Replacement's current Collider Artist in Residence. She's been in many theatre projects, directed and choreographed a dance short film called Wide Stance Dance for the Festival of Recorded Movement, and she has choreographed her debut music video, Groupthink, oh, as well as Different Than Before, which we're here for today. Hello, Amanda. Hi. Next up, I am delighted to introduce you to our director, Mayumi Yoshida. Born in Japan, raised in three continents, Mayumi is an actor and an award-winning director and writer who lives in the space between many different cultures. She is known for her role as Crown Princess and the Man in the High Castle from Amazon Prime. She's currently a participant in the Warner Media and Ca Canadian Academy Access Writers Program, TIFF Netflix Talents Accelerator Fellowship, and TIFF Writer Studio. Her directorial debut short film, Akashi, which she wrote and acted, won many accolades, including Outstanding Writer at NBC Universal Short Film Festival and Best Female Director at Vancouver Short Film Festival. She also received the Newcomer Award at 2019 Vancouver Women in Film Festival Spotlight Awards. And I'm pretty sure she directed Amanda Sum's previous music video, Group Think. Welcome, Mayumi. Thank you so much, Sabrina. <laughs> and now I am delighted to introduce the actor playing the father in this music video, Tai Ma. For more than four decades, Tai Ma has blazed new trails for the representation of Asian Americans in Hollywood. Celebrated for his uncanny versatility, his body of work encompasses virtually every genre across film, television, and theater. 
from big budget studio pictures like Disney's Mulan and the Rush Hour series to acclaimed independent films like Netflix's Tiger Tail, The Farewell, Meditation Park, one of my favorites, and TV shows like CW's Kung Fu. Tai Ma's unforgettable performances have garnered unanimous critical acclaim and honors throughout his groundbreaking career. Welcome, Tai Ma. Thank you. Nice to be here. And now, wow, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one more. I got one more intro for you. And yeah. I am going to be introducing the incredible artist who is playing Amanda's sister, Sarah, and I have some insider info. I know that Amanda's real life sister is also called Sarah, and that actor is Olivia Chang. Olivia mm. is the dynamic actress from Warrior, a series based on a concept by martial arts icon Bruce Lee that's returning to HBO in 2023. She was recently honored by Film Independence and SAG Indy as a new wave actor to watch. She also recently wrapped two seasons of Apple TV C, a post-apocalyptic action drama starring Jason Momoa. Her first short film as a writer-director, what, opened at the 2021 London International Film Festival? Well, that's just amazing, Olivia. And she is actively producing film and television projects. As an activist, Olivia has always been passionate about racial justice issues and now works with Inspire Justice amidst the recent spike in anti-Asian violence. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Okay. Thanks, Sabrina. Something very exciting is... <laughs> I'm yeah, so happy to you. see you all here. <laughs> Something very exciting is about to happen. Now that we have all of us together... We are going to premiere for the world the music video, the short film that is different than before. Okay, here we go. <laughs> And are we splitting the wind? Who's gonna cross the line? And are we cross the line? And are we splitting the wind? Who's gonna cross the line? And are we splitting? Ow! Thank you so much! Good night, Vancouver! What is that? Oh no, I said I said stir fry noodles. Stir fry. You speak English? No. Okay, you're not in your country anymore. You should probably learn how to speak English. Or maybe you should go home. I don't know. Sit. Can we get four forks? Let it pass. Eat. Ah, yes, I'll go high different than before. Dad, huh? you're up.
something's gotta go If not today Then tomorrow Then tomorrow With new waves, new rides New bike routes, new tires What's so funny? What's so funny? What's the problem, old man? We're just having a laugh. Leave! Then be Well, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I know that I did. Very emotional journey. We have a lot to talk about today. So I welcome Amanda, Amanda Sum, Mayumi Yoshida, Olivia Chang, and Tai Ma to the chat for a conversation about this incredible video that we all just watched. Welcome and congratulations. Oh, congratulations, everybody. Yay. Yes, all around. <laughs> okay, Amanda, let's start with you. Mm. I'm going to put you in the hot seat. Okay. Tell me about the inspiration for the song. The mm. song different than before. Um, well, I wrote the song in May 2020, mm. um, which was the first spring and the first Asian Heritage Month of the pandemic. So I was um, sitting in my room a lot um, and writing a lot of music. And at that time, there was a quite a harsh uprising of, of Asian hate crimes that have um, surfaced to, to the news and media. Um, and so that felt like that was kind of painting what my mind was thinking about a lot. Um, uh, and so I wrote this song with that in mind and with this um, yearning and this craving for 
clearly a, a systemic change needed needs to happen, um, but nothing was going to happen um, in the in the snap of a finger, and that we needed to um, these like long term changes um, we needed to sit with and and keep our foot on the pedal to um, find a day where we don't have to worry about um, being attacked or our loved ones being attacked. Um, and the song kind of gets at this, if not today, then tomorrow, then tomorrow, 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 until we kind of can land on a, a tomorrow that um, feels safe for us in our, our community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I heard the song before I saw the video, and I, I, had, I had chills when mm. I, I heard the song. And then seeing the video, you know, we see this family out for a dim sum and karaoke, celebrating the engagement of their daughter to such and so hill. There's karaoke, there's a lot of laughs, and then they're heckled by a white family. The dad just wants them to ignore racism and the daughters, well, they want something different. And I, when I was watching this, you know, as I, I've, and I I'm, I'm, can't imagine that I'm gonna be the only one who wa is watching this, this, uh, this film, this music video, this film, the, I mean, which it is, it's a film. Um, I felt that sh I have known that shame. I have, and I have had seen my father experience racism, and then just want to ignore it, just ignore it, just ignore it. Um, and it, you, this, you made, you all made it just so, so visceral for me, um, and then also brought brought us into such joy as well. And then, to, I mean, within six minutes, I felt completely empowered. I'm like, my gosh, maybe, maybe now. This next time, my dad will be empowered, or will be empowered to stand up and stand with them and say, "Get out of here." So, I mean, thank you for that, um, Mayumi. What what kind of conversations did you have with Amanda when you were when you were you know, kind of deciding what the what the vision for this film for this video was going to be? You know, like what was that interplay between? what you were reading, what you were hearing, mm. and the story that you wanted to tell on screen. I first heard this song on her uh, online concert over Zoom. And even through Zoom, I just instantly felt like, and she had, she talked about what she just mentioned to us about her inspiration for the song. And then when I heard the song, I instantly connected with it and I asked her like dibs if you're making music video, <laughs> because I just love the song so much. And then when the time came t for us to sort of like talk about, okay, we should apply for funding and what is the concept, what is the story, um, naturally her inspiration for the song was the foundation of what, what kind of video we want to make. And I think it was quite natural for us to like put, um, the elders in the center of it because those that age group was sort of the, the 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 majority of the victims were in that age group so we wanted to kind of create a piece that was an empowering video for them and then also focusing on like their joy and how 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 much of a superhero they are as well and they're so cool and really um, we wanted to put them in the center in this music video and then we were talking about like okay casting and then I thought of Ty instantly because when we were talking about like really cool <laughs> elders I was like well I think at that time he was doing the wash the hate campaign and I was I was seeing so many videos of him as well and so I thought like Ty in an Elton John like Elvis Presley super cool outfit would be so empowering to see I think for the Asian community as well because he is Ty is the Asian dad of all, he is the iconic Asian dad to all of us and I kind of wanted to see him in this different form which is this pop icon and and of course we all know him as the grounded dad in so many different movies as well so pairing with that I thought would be a very iconic character so um, that was the the seed to the whole idea yeah okay and then to our our 
performers then, you know, beyond Amanda, I mean, we do have Olivia playing Sarah, uh, and we have um, Ty as, as the dad. Why did, Olivia and Ty, why did you want to be involved in, in telling this particular story? Uh, for Maybe me, Olivia will start I with mean, you. I guess a couple of reasons I wanted to get involved. One, you know, I've I can uh, hear you. Mayumi is someone um, that I can't I see Ty at all right know now. through Vancouver circles. And I feel like in the last few years, I've kind of kept track and watched as, yeah. you know, her um, work behind the camera and her work as a filmmaker, just it just keeps expanding. And there's just always like a really <clears throat> exciting announcement. She's joined this program. She's gotten into this. She's working with this person, you know? So she's she's okay. been a filmmaker I've wanted to work with and support for a long time. Um, I love the idea of meeting and supporting, you know, young new talent like Amanda Sum. Um, and when Mayumi sent me the lookbook for the concept, I honestly, I just started to kind of ugly cry because it just, it just got me. It just, it just really hit something really deep in terms of, I think the pain that a lot of us in the community have been feeling the last couple of years, but also more than the trauma, which, you know, isn't necessarily something that I think I would have wanted to necessarily portray. I think I was more interested in the joy and the celebration and the humor that the concept you know, brought to the table. And she used Ty's image in the lookbook and I felt like I could just see it and feel it. And, you know, knowing what kind of artist Ty is, I, I, I knew if we could get him that he would totally bring the concept to life um, as he did so beautifully. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's why I wanted to, to do it, to, to work with the, um, to work with the, 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 the Vancouver Asian talent scene um, and to mm. just put something out there artistically that spoke to what we're going through as a community in this time, um, but in a way that felt a little tongue in cheek and um, fun, you know, it wasn't just dark. It, there, there was a lot of light, light to add dimension to the mm. undertones of maybe a little bit of darkness there, so. Yeah, it felt cathartic in a lot of ways. Like, I'm, you know, we can talk about the experience of, of you know, your emotional journeys with this, and especially with filming, you know, over the course of that of that weekend in a bit. But Ty, why did you want to be involved in the video for Different Than Before? Mayumi and I, we, we know each other. So we, we worked on, a, on the Man High Castle together, and she was my Dalek coach. And uh, I thought she was an amazing artist. And then she was moving into writing and directing. And, uh, and I told her, I said, if you were doing anything, I'd be happy to be there and, and to lend my support. And then uh, and I realized that uh, Olivia was also in a project. I was very happy about that. And uh, I saw a platform that she was trying to create, which is uh, during the pandemic. And, and I thought it was a, a powerful platform for AAPIs, you know, to be, be uh, creative and, and come up with things that are that are uh, powerful and interesting. And then I hear Amanda's song, then, uh, and I thought it was just a, a really wonderful uh, a piece of uh, music and, and lyrics, and I really wanted to be part of it. And uh, really, I mean, looking at, at the, um, the, the video uh, and, and the uh, uh, music video, I thought it achieved it really achieved what we wanted to do was to tell the world that you know we need to uh, stand up against you know hate and racism you know as a as a unit as as a, as one body so uh, and I think the final image really shows me that and I'm I'm very happy happy with that outcome. I mean a, qu a question for for all of you then I would love to talk about the experience of filming and making this video. I mean, the video, the, the film, the music video itself, it is, it's such a journey in a six minute. So I'm assuming the experience of filming was, uh, was an experience as well. Let's start with you, Amanda. What were some of the memorable or powerful moments from filming, from filming that you can tell us about? Mm, um, well, it was really exciting for me because this was the biggest thing that I've, I've been <laughs> part of so 
so I can stop still pinching myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it just felt like how, how we had, my Yumi and I had been talking about this since uh, September 2020. We first um, touched base on it. So over this long term of, of planning, it felt like it was actually happening and that we actually did it with so much help and so much support and everyone in the room together, which, you know, is pretty magical to have so many brains and limbs and hearts doing one thing, um, especially after coming out of this these couple years of, you know, not knowing if we had to postpone from a new variant or not knowing this or that or doing all these remote yeah. things. So to actually be in the room and to feel palpable, mm -hmm. oh, we're doing, we, we're getting to do this and we get to transform this amazing space into many different um, um, looks and, and yeah, that, that felt like really special. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mayumi, was there anything that you did to make sure that the, the acts of racism that we see play out were it traumatizing, you know, at all, or, you know, what, for anybody involved, like what, what, what kind of conversations, you know, did you, did you have with the performers about that in particular? We had a, a interesting moment with like, I had a, I had a, a many talks with, uh, especially the hecklers folks because they were also very conscious of like what they're, what they're portraying mm -hmm. and the energy they'll be bringing. And um, uh, it was really good to just touch base with everybody because of course it is, um, it's 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 difficult on both sides, but um, Ty was also very generous to sort of like really amp up his energy so that we're we're not leaving anything behind. And then um, the more we uh, explore that part of um, not that we're, we don't want it to be a trauma point, we want to make sure that it's. Uh, but so, but it also had to be real. It mm. it also had to feel like people do say these awful things. So um, I'm really grateful that the actors really brought that. And then uh, overall, I think the crew just had this energy from even from pre-production. So many of us gathered, and we all were almost helping each other like we're just family. Mm. And uh, I think that energy translates to the screen as well. And even for the performers who were there who didn't have um, lines, who were there at the table sitting and even the other family members, like it was just, it really felt like everybody was um, creating something together rather than they're sort of like, oh, I'm just here for, I don't even know anybody. Everybody ended up knowing everybody. And um, I remember actually one of the, uh, one of the people who came in who were the background performers, they told me that, oh, I got to talk with like Tai Mai and Olivia Chang. They were so nice. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah? And then he, they were like, yeah, like I thought like, I'm just, I'm just only there as a background performer. I didn't think they would talk to me, but they like talked to me, like, isn't that crazy? And it's like, they're, they're just beautiful human beings who would just, you know, it, it, and that was the environment that I think it takes a lot for uh, the leads to reach out to their co-stars and also even the crew and the, the background performers. And I think everybody set the tone that we are all making this together. So um, I really owe it to everybody. I don't think that it was really me. Like I think everybody kind of brought that energy. So yeah. That's that's wonderful to hear. Although it's not surprising, you have you know beautiful people bringing beautiful energy to beautiful art, right? Like that's that 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 was the alchemy that was that was going to happen. Olivia, hi. Can can you talk to, talk a little bit about the um, the experience that you had filming this video? I I think of all the characters, I really related to your character the most. 
because I ha I have been that that daughter who who is um, j just a, a mix of emotions, concern and and shame and and anger and and fr just frustration, you know. And so I'm just I'm I'm wondering about you know what the kind of things that were going through your mind as you were performing and and just what you what you remember about that experience. Um, yeah, I mean. I think what I remember most about the experience was just how, um, y you know, for, for, for how serious part of the topic and inspiration was for the video, I, I feel like we had a lot of fun. Um, I think I was struck by how real it, it felt. And I think I remember mm. that feeling of catharsis and that we kind of got an ending to our particular story in our particular world where, you know, someone who was standing in for all our grandparents kind of won his dignity, you know, for himself and in front of a room full of people. Um, so that actually was surprising for me. I didn't, you know, we, we all knew how it ended. We all had the script, but actually getting to film is sort of, mm -hmm stand and live through it you know i think sometimes it's that thing where you know our jobs as actors is to and, and artists is to really do our best to feel what our characters are going through and so i think it was a, a bit of a gift that day mm. to get to feel a sense of you know pride and feel a sense of just dignity um filming that Hmm. Ty, what can you tell me about some of uh, the about the experience of of making you know this this short film, this video, you know, with this with this talented gang here, you know, and what were some of the things that were going through your mind, you know, as you as your character moved through the story, as you move this character through the story? I really were impressed by by everyone behind the camera. Because it was a, a fairly well represented, diverse group, and that often you don't see. You know, you, in front of the camera, we see plenty of, you know, getting dead in terms of diversity, inclusion. But mm. behind the camera, we still are lacking. We really need more representation behind the camera, and that's what I saw in this particular endeavor that we we got into. And I was very happy with that development. And as far as, you know, moving the character mm. through the story is concerned, I, I feel that it was the song that moved me. <laughs> it's the song that got me, you know, moving me from stage to stage to stage. And, and Mayumi's putting together these imagery which was shared with us prior to even getting into a, a single uh, a frame that, that's recorded or roll. Uh, uh, and, and really in that sense, you know, it it, uh, it it's uh, really to Mayumi's credit to to be able to share her vision with us, you know, before we got in there and, and did the work. And I think all filmmakers should be able to learn from take a page from from her work. Is that you know when 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 you include all the all the all the uh, 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 all the imageries that that is shared, you know, a lot of times we don't see it until you know when we get to set. But I think, you know, the Coen brothers also do that. They share imagery mm -hmm. with us before we, we, we do a, a frame of shot that, that's, that's happening. So I think that's really important. You know, I, I think maybe something that uh, we all can adapt, you know, in terms of trusting the people we cast and share that knowledge with all of us. And so that when we walk in there, we are, are, are completely prepared to 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 deliver you know what our object our objective of the particular project is amazing mayumi i love that answer from time <laughs> i was watching your face like how does it make you feel to hear that uh i i don't i i have a lot to learn <laughs> a lot 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 to learn so um I'm just honored. I, that's all I can say. I, 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 there was lots of lessons to learn for myself through uh, this production, and I mean every production. There's always stuff, and um, 
uh, I learned so much from everybody from the crew. And I think what Ty mentioned about the the amount of um, diversity in the crew, it kind of also came naturally when we talked about the project. We also talked about uh, naturally we want to make it. Uh, we want we want to make sure we're doing justice to the material and and um, with the song and the message. So one of the, which is one of the reasons why we really wanted Olivia and Ty because those two are just huge icons in our Asian Canadian community and also as um, advocates in our representation and the message that we send in our community. So um, it really mattered that the people who are involved were not only just good people and perfect for the role, but they're, them themselves are actually like advocates of of the material and their life is speaking to like what is what we're trying to the message that we're trying to send so I think all of that just multiplied yeah and we are going to talk further about diversity and representation and the work the work that we are all doing to to uplift and elevate diverse voices in this industry but before we move on Amanda I, I have been one of your mother's friends for 20 years. I was just <laughs> delighted to see Linda in the video. What did it mean to have your mom not only on set, but to play your mom in this film? It was, it, it feels like a big full circle moment. And she, Linda is like, I wouldn't have, felt good about pursuing the arts had she not um, just been such a big inspiration and and growing up in the in the years that you've known her we've gone to multiple auditions to play mother and daughter together but it's always been a an either or or a neither nor <laughs> so it feels really right and special for the first time that we get to play mother daughter for it to be something um, so meaningful and so personal and, and close to home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I love you, Linda. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, this, this video, we are having its world premiere in Asian Heritage Month, which is a time of celebration, but it can also feel difficult to celebrate when anti-Asian hate crimes, crimes against Asian people are on the rise all over, especially North America, most notably in Vancouver, where hate crimes against Asians have surged by 3,000%. That's not a typo. That's It's 3,000%. Ty, I'd like to start with you with this question. Why is it important to celebrate the depth and breadth of Asian heritage during this month? especially during an era of increasing violence and xenophobia? You know, our community is a multi-ethnic, multicultural community. And many of us do, do not get represented. So I think it's important to, to celebrate our diversity within our own community, you know, and to support each other and to lift up each other, you know, to show that not all of us, you know, are getting the attention that we deserve. And, and, and a lot of times we get overlooked because, oh, the Asians, everything's taken care of, everything's good. No, not, not, not to all of, our, all of us are all good, you know. And I think really that, that this whole month is something that, that uh, we, it is still some small steps that we are taking, unfortunately. I wish we were taking more giant steps, you know. And, and that's something, that, uh, uh, something that, that we really need to strive for. And hopefully we will make a lot bigger uh, impa impact, you know, by highlighting, you know, the AAPI community in North America. Uh, I think I'd like to, let's, I'm going to throw it to you, Olivia, because I know, um, I, mean, I mean, I know this is central to all of our work, but it's particular to yours. I've, I've known in the last couple of years that you have been, uh, really um, speaking out and standing up, speaking out against, against the violence against Asians during this time. Why is this month important, um, especially right now? I think it's just important because 
you know, one thing I was really struck by in the last couple of years was just actually how many North American born Asians don't know the community's history um, on this side of the world. And that for them, the violence and the rhetoric and the hate and the xenophobia was so shocking to so many people's systems versus maybe having the perspective that this is a page out of a playbook repeating itself, you know? Um, so I didn't expect the community at large to have a grasp of things like the Japanese internment camp, the Page Act, Chinese Exclusion Act, the Filipino Farmers Movement, you know, what happened to Vincent Chin, um, you know, everything with Hawaii. Um, but to realize that actually, you know, this generation of Canadian and American born Chinese and other, you know, um, ethnic diasporas uh, within the community don't actually know too much about their history. I just think, I just, I, I just think it's another, you know, indication of, um, I, you know, you were saying earlier that part of your radio show is to um, examine white supremacy in the film and television industry. Did, did I hear that right? So it's interesting that, you know, if we don't yes, know yes. how our community has contributed to the making of this continent or how our communities have been persecuted by this continent, I, I, I just, mm. I think the systemic issues, the systemic racism um, can flourish and can thrive. Um, which bringing it back to, you know, what Amanda was saying that, you know, her song is inspired by this idea of maybe not today, but maybe tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And I think sometimes for tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow to come, we have to understand what we've come from. Mm. Mayumi, what do you think the film and television industry can do to, you know, stamp out the racism, to stamp out the, the, the acts of hate against Asian people, you know, and, and dismantle white supremacy. Big question for, for this conversation, you know, but it's, I mean, it's, it, it's, all, it's all connected, isn't it? I think the power of media is, um, is ginormous and I've been influenced by it my entire life. So uh, my, my hope and my dream is that whether it's this music video or what, any of the work i think that some i i read someone um saying this but us existing in uh in the media is still a protest like that in itself is we are still uh our, our existence is like a banner of protest of all of us we the visibility still matters it's 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 not only for people to feel like they're empowered but also it's an educational opportunity as well for anyone who is ignorant to the the, the, um, the issues or and also like what olivia mentioned um it gives us an opportunity to learn about other cultures and our own and the past and even give us the opportunity to think further into the future and that's what literature, that's what art allows us to do. And um, I hope and my goal is that I can contribute in some sort of way. And I think I've always had a fear of forgetting as a individual. Ever since I was a little kid, I always was like obsessed with the fear of forgetting. <laughs> so most of the times I write or the themes that I like to put in in my movies or my stories are um, oftentimes like related to like legacy or uh, and sometimes because the people who are who, who's lived longer than me like the elders the reason why they're kind of in the center of the story for my material it's because I think there's that fear of me forgetting that if they pass on nobody there's nobody to tell that story that they've lived so if I can be of any help to keep that legacy going on, I'm 
it would be my honor. So um, I, I, I see myself as a filmmaker to hopefully contribute to that. And uh, and that would be in, in obviously in, in the power of media changing the world. So, um, I, but, and I think it starts from individuals. You can't, and, and then meet and take, making sure you're including community and it expands from there because uh, the power of community is, I think, ginormous, so. Ty, what about, I mean, I know that you've been doing this work for decades now. What, do, what role do you think that the film and television industry can play in, in making the world safer for Asians and stamping out racism? I think it's a, it's a powerful tool, you know, for us to, to, to utilize. Because entertainment, you know, obviously when people come and see your things, you know, they're already willing partners. They're already, we're 50% there already. So it is a delivery device. So if you're willing, uh, then we have a better opportunity to, to get your, your attention. And, and we continue to tell our stories in, un, in an uncompromising way. Then we're making progress because I think all new filmmakers should remember this. You will tell your story. Tell your story the way you want to tell it. And do not have other people to influence you and say, well, maybe you should do it this way or that way. And I think that's really important for young filmmakers to know that to tell their stories truthfully and the way they want to tell it. And I think it would, it, the impact would be uh, uh, tremendous. And I can attest that that is what he reminded me on set as well. And he was very empowering to make sure that, like, trust what you want to do. And it means a lot. So thanks, Ty. It sounds like it was a life-changing video for you. A life -changing it was. Video. I mean, even in the process, I think. Uh, gathering the people was such a special uh, opportunity and then for like Amanda and you know you also Sabrina you being involved as a sponsor like even talking to sponsors like I don't usually do that for my own works because I think oh why would they want to support my work but then uh, for this project I was like very proudly I, I didn't I had no shame in going to other people saying like this is a meaningful video with tremendous talent and uh, a lot of people involved that I really believe in and it's it, as um, not that I don't believe in the other stuff I do of course I do but this just had that um, strong message that I knew that it, it it has a big ripple effect if we involve more people who believe in the project so yeah it, it, that in itself was um, a life-changing act in sort of like in the pre-production and even in production too. We are coming to the end of our time together today. So we're at the last couple of questions. Olivia, what do you think it means to be a good ally to Asian North Americans in this particular moment? You know, I, I, I'm just gonna talk about what I've learned about being a good ally and if it resonates for people because I think we can all be better allies to so many other communities outside of our own. Um, I, I know for myself um, in the last couple years, um, number one, do not turn the people of color you know or, or, or whatever members of whatever you know marginalized community um, into your own personal Google. You know, um, be, be aware that it's not their jobs to educate hmm. you with um, their own personal trauma and there are a lot of books out there and if you really want to learn to be a good ally there are so many thought leaders who've done so much research and so many interviews and put it all down into words for all of us to read um, I think sometimes just knowing that being a good ally you know I think sometimes that these, these feel like such big concepts and it can be just as simple as calling and saying like, hey, how are you? You know, and, and, and how are you doing? And are, are you okay? And it can be something as simple as just taking someone out for coffee and just really learning to know them, not 
not by, okay, hey, this is your gender and this is your ethnicity and therefore I define you by this versus just getting to know someone's humanity. You know, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be like real serious. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes just get, just getting to know people and, and getting to know their point of view, I think eventually you'll figure out what it means to be your brand of a good ally. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely it does. Does anybody else have any other ideas about what it means to to be a good ally? I think uh, don't live in isolation. You really have to, to expand all our circles. Because I think that, that's, a, that's an issue, I think. You know, we all live in the little pockets. You know, it, it, it is not really a melting pot. It's a, it's a melting separate pots. So we, we really need, need one big pot. And I think that, that's when, when we connect. You know, that's when we, we see each other for who we are. And, 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 and we, we will also see that we have a lot more similarities as opposed to differences. So I think we need to, and, and whatever the difference is, we celebrate that. We celebrate the fact that, you know, all of those things, uh, in, because this is North America. North America is a borrowed land. <laughs> We're all visitors here. So really, you know, to, to, to know that, to be, to be respectful to, to the people who were here before and to be respectful to each other. And I think, you know, that if we continue to per perpetuate this kind of attitude, then we're going to get somewhere. Otherwise, we're just treading water, man. We're like hamsters on a wheel. And we keep on, you know, doing that. Every decade, every century is going to be repeated. And, and it's something that, that we need to get over. So. Yeah. Fantastic answer. Okay, Amanda, I'm going to give you the final word today. This is my question for you because this is a this is Amanda Sum music video. So my question is for Amanda Sum: How do you want people to feel when the video is over? What what feelings would you like them to be sitting in? What questions would you like them to be asking yourself? You know what what would what would that look like for you? Oh, I think I think there's what I would want people to feel after seeing it is some sense of being seen and some sense of themselves reflected in it. Whether whether they're in the Asian community or not, that there's something to be said about um, being a visitor to the nuances and details of our culture and what and kind of a reflection and an investigation on themselves on what part they play in that story yeah yeah that's amazing wonderful congratulations i am i'm so proud of all of you and i'm so happy to be to be involved in my own small way as one of the sponsors amanda sum mayomi yoshida olivia chang tai ma thank you for being here and to everybody who tuned in today thank you for watching Please tune in at noon to watch the worldwide release of Different Than Before on the Amanda Sum YouTube channel. And if you like, and you're going to like, please share it. Hashtag Different Than Before. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We did it. We did it. We did it. <laughs>